and welcome to this uh, first Sunday in Trinity, as we call it in some parts of the church, and in other parts of the church, this is called today the 12th Sunday of the year. Welcome here with us, wherever you are, whoever you are, and whatever reason you have to join us, we welcome you, and we want you to know that God loves you. So, today we will focus on a gospel passage of the casting out of demons from the man who was possessed by many, and we will have that as our focus for this service and for the sermon. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, you have called us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to you. Transform us by the renewal of our minds, that we may know and do your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We go now straight to the Gospel reading for today. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke the 8th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Then they arrived at the country of the Gennesareans, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city, who had demons, met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you got to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him, and he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter them. So he gave them permission. And then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herders saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. And the people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man 
whom the demons had gone from, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gennesareans asked Jesus to leave them. For they were seized with a great fear, and so got into the boat and returned. And the man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home, and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. So let us sing now the first time the hymn that we will use today, which is God forgave my sins in Jesus' name. Father's Day. I have to say that to all of you and many of you who are on vessels somewhere in the ocean or in a port now will not be with your children, but know that you are important to them as you are important to God. So, Happy Father's Day. Celebrate this day and know that the sacrifices that you are making to be able to send money home to be able to support your families is so deeply appreciated. So to today's Gospel lesson, and there's a couple of things that occur to me as I reflect on this Gospel passage. The first of them is, I can't imagine that the swine herders or the owners of the swine were very charmed with Jesus. They'd lost a lot of profit. They'd lost their swine. It's fine for the demons to be cast out of this man, but enter the swine and destroy all their profitability and all their farming? I'm quite sure that people were not happy with Jesus. And it's no surprise to me that they ask Jesus to leave. What more are you going to do? Who else are you going to harm? Of course, the swine are one aspect of the story. The other is this man who has for so long been tormented. In the words in the Gospel passage, we hear that there are many demons that had possessed him. Perhaps today, in psychological terms, people would want to say this man had schizophrenia or some other um, mental condition, 
psychological condition. But the reality is that the people of his time understood him to be demon-possessed, and the people of his time saw how he had been restored to a right mind. And the people of his time were astonished at the way in which God was able to work, and they understood Jesus to have authority over these things. The man himself, when he has been restored to his right mind, wants to cling to Jesus. For the first time in many years, he finds himself able to function. For the first time in many years, he's able to sit quietly, be part of a conversation, be in a group. And he wants to cling to Jesus and stay with Jesus. Maybe this is in some way, again, a reflection of what we see at the Transfiguration, where Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses and Elijah, and the disciples who are with him said, Teacher, let us, let us erect tents and we can stay here. Let's not leave this place. Let's stay in this holy environment. Let's just stick to what we have. But as on the occasion of the Mount of Transfiguration, here too Jesus says to this young man, No, go back to your home and proclaim to people the love that God has shown you and how much God has done for you. And I suppose that the teaching that we are receiving today is fundamentally one of recognizing what God does in our lives and proclaiming that, sharing that. One of the challenges that we have today is, I think, a lack of the attitude of gratitude. And so many of us do not see the many gifts and blessings that God gives to us in our daily lives. We do not see that even if we have a job that pays, if we're not enjoying that job fully, we don't give thanks for the job. We don't give thanks for the salary that enables us to keep our family. If we're having challenges in our marriage, we don't celebrate the fact that we have someone who we can share with. If we're having difficulty with our children, if we're not seeing them enough, we don't give thanks that we have children that can even engender these feelings. And so much of the joyfulness of life comes from an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of recognizing the many gifts that we receive on a daily basis. As we shared on the Feast of Pentecost, if it had not been for the breath of God within us, we would not be, we would not live, we would not be alive. And so this Sunday, perhaps you don't think of yourself as having demons, I hope you don't, and perhaps you don't think of yourself as being continually blessed by God, but I hope that you do. And today I would ask you to use this day as a day of reflecting on the gifts that God gives you on a daily basis. Earlier this week, on Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of Corpus Christi, and so this morning we will celebrate communion together. And when we who are in the chapel have received communion, I will pray with those of you who are attending this service uh, virtually the spiritual communion prayer. So this, this Father's Day, recognize with joy the many gifts that God has given you. And we pray with you for the time when you will be reunited with your families again and be able to celebrate the joy and the love 
that God gives each one of us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We will use the second Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Almighty King, Almighty, Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for he is your living word, through whom, through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin and given him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his commands, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once and for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and 
and with him, and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, so we pray in our own languages. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? Though we are many, we are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he has given for you, and his blood, which he has shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. For those of you who join us digitally, we pray now together the prayer of spiritual communion. Soul of Christ, sanctify us. Body of Christ, save us. Blood of Christ, inebriate us. Water from the side of Christ, wash us. Passion of Christ, strengthen us. O good Jesus, hear us. Within thy wounds, hide us and suffer us never be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend us. In the hour of our death, call us and bid us come to thee, that with thy saints we may praise thee for ever and ever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious, his mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the power of the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, in this week, 
we offer ourselves anew to God for God's service in thanksgiving for the many gifts and blessings we have received. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, those you love and those you pray for. This Father's Day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve it all. In the name of Christ. Amen. We sing together again that hymn of our freely being forgiven by God and us freely serving Him. Thank you.